How's it going, YouTube? This is Strange AI, and today is the What Did I Buy series. Did I win or lose? You get to choose. Um, sorry for the lack of videos this week. I just kind of, I've been busy and I've been a little bit burned out from videos. Things have been going well. Just, uh, yeah, need a little bit of a week off. The Monday sales recap was about the only thing I did this week, and then I guess technically this is this week's video as well. So, but next week should be at least three, potentially four videos, and uh, get back on the grind. But yeah. What you see in front of you is what I bought. We got $1,400 or 200,000 yen in cards. The reason it's always the same amount of money is simply because that's the best amount to have shipped from Japan without having any issues with import um, taxes, them going through your stuff, extra fees, et cetera, et cetera, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, so 1400 bucks in front of you. Yeah, I mean, we're going to go through this, enjoy it, check condition on a couple things, and yeah, sit back, relax, and... Yeah, here we go. Start off with some old back. All right. Man, I feel like it's been a little bit since I did. Well, I guess Monday. I guess it's not too long ago, but um, let me go tilt this out a little bit further. There we go. Now we're cooking. All right, we got Misty, the original waifu, uh, hollow from Jim. Wait, I think these are from... No, I lied to you. These aren't from Jim. Doesn't have the rarity symbols. So these are from her... What is it? Hamada City Jim deck, I believe. But yeah, one, two, three, four copies of Misty. Great card. Great original Jim leader. Back of this is saying... Saw some love. But... Will be a nice single for somebody going to a good home. Well, maybe I don't know, this one's scratched. This will be someone that doesn't really like Misty but needs this for a set completion or something. <laughs> oh, man. Next up, we have Dragonair from Base Set. All this should be regular rarity. We got one, two, three, four of those. Fantastic artwork from this from Base Set. I guess this is probably one of the more unique artworks, realistically, from Base. Like a lot more going on i mean not compared to today's standards but definitely more than than uh, a lot of the other ones check the back of this oh yeah <laughs> uh, this is the first time you're watching this series basically the goal for this stuff when i buy it is to pay a price i feel comfortable that if i have to if i can't grade ooh, looks like we lie we got another copy of that if i can't uh grade this stuff which obviously you saw that's pretty not gradable um, I feel like that I can at least sell it to worst case scenario, break even, or potentially, you know, make, make some money off of just selling it raw. So that one might be a little tricky, but the other one should make up for it, hopefully. Next up, we have Dragonite here. Tilt you up just a little bit again. There we go. Dragonite here from Fossil. We've got one, two, three copies of this. Uh, if you saw the one the other week, I had uh, a bunch of these, and looks like I guess I just picked up a few more um, in this last order. We got three copies of Dragonite. Ooh, nice roll on that one. Um, Dragonite. Looking like some whitening. But, I mean, these these cards, I mean, just because they're not mint, I mean, they're, they're you know, they're going to go to a good home. Somebody's going to enjoy them. Some, you know, not everybody collects graded stuff, even though that's kind of popped off the last couple of years. We got Dark Dragonite up next from Rocket. We can already see in the front of this one that uh, will not be grading that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight copies. Also had a bunch of these in the last one, so I guess I'm just stocking up on Dragonites. Which is funny, actually. I did place an order the other day where, like, I literally did... I needed to, like, hit, like, a certain dollar amount. So I added... I just searched Dragonite and did just Dragonites. And, um... Yeah, so that order is going to be, like, just packed full of random modern Dragonite stuff, so. But, yeah, this one doesn't look too bad overall on the back, but it's yet to be determined when we uh, flip it around and check out the rest of it. But, overall, it doesn't look bad, does it? But, off-center, so regardless, it's uh, still probably not win 10, but we got to check out the rest of it as well. So, still a beautiful card, though. Another really nice one here. We have Houndoom from Neo3 Rev. Got two copies. Looks like a line going up through that one. And back copy, we are looking at Indent. Pretty, a couple scratches. Pretty clean overall, though. Nice card. Something like that, as long as there's no indents in the front. Um, probably, probably labeled as excellent condition. Um, 
it seems like I'm doing pretty well on that for anyone that's bought from me. Everybody seems pretty happy with the condition I'm giving. I best biggest thing is I try to be consistent. If somebody would give me negative feedback and I felt that it, you know, it was deserved, I would simply just improvise from there and say, all right, we need to be a little more stricter on this or I need to do that. Not that I don't miss stuff. I know the other week I missed something for somebody's order. Um, I missed like a, a hairline. Uh, I, I labeled it as like excellent or lightly played or something. And it was like a hairline crease that you could barely see. When I'm flying through this stuff, um, I do pretty well, but you definitely, you're not perfect. And when that stuff happens, you just own up. You know, I told him that he could return for free or that I would partially refund him. And um, they wanted the partial refund. Went with that. They were happy. I was happy with that. And, you know, on your way. You're going to deal with stuff like that when you run a business, and especially with cards, um, scenarios like that. You just got to own up to it. If it's your fault, it's your fault. But also hold your ground. If it isn't your fault, you know it's not. Uh, the customer is not always right. I'm sorry, guys. The customer is not always right. I am the customer on many occasions, and just because I'm the customer, I am not always right. So keep that in mind. Hold your ground and uh, know your know your worth and um, your time's worth when you're dealing with customers because sometimes you deal with some uh, pretty crappy people. But um, yeah, a little bit of a tangent there. Let's move on here. We got Magikarp here from Base Set. These are two no rarity. So we, yeah, do not have a rarity symbol down there. Uh, no rarity seemed like it's kind of calmed down a lot. Yeah, these have swing. These are nice binder copies, though, and I, I would assume there's people out there uh, collecting no rarity for the binder. I kind of feel like I want to do that at some point. I don't know. Then again, thinking about having to pay, like, probably two grand or $1,500 or something bare minimum for a PSA 1 great, like, condition Charizard is kind of cringy to think about, but... I don't know. We'll see. I do have a PSA 10 Japanese base set Charizard in my collection, but I don't know. We'll see. Maybe that's something I'll do down the line. I, I think every video I say I want to do something, and um, we're going to build a list at this point that is unachievable with my lifetime. Uh, we have Mew here from Fossil. We've got one. Ooh, looks so game messed up again here. We got a Hamachan's Slow King. We got one, two, three. Just make sure there's no more in there. Yeah. Three Mews from Fossil. Another kind of iconic card from this era. Probably one of the best cards in Fossil. Guess it depends who you are. This one doesn't look too bad in the back. Uh, you guys, I, I've said it before in the other other videos of this, uh, because I'm looking through the camera at this stuff rather than in front of me, um, you're going to be able to probably see better of what's going on than me. So if I say, oh, look, something looks mint, it doesn't. It's not because I'm saying it's mint, because I, I, I truly think it is through the camera, but you're seeing it in a different light than I am. So, but... Yeah, it doesn't look bad. A lot of scratches in the front one there, though. Yeah, now, now you're up. Hamachan Slow King here. This is kind of an interesting promo. Excuse me, Hamada Chans. This one, dent in the top there. Oh, yeah, big dent in the bottom there. You're pretty obvious to see that, but still a nice card. Uh, it's, it's really hard with those, the, the glossy ones from this era. This stuff just gets damaged so easily. We got Mew CD promos here, two copies. I guess we'll look at the Mew. Hopefully, this is like showing you guys off to like stuff maybe you've never seen before. You know, maybe it's drawn in, maybe some interest in this, you know, certain cards or something like that. I hope, you know, it's, I guess we're going through what I, what I bought, but hopefully it's stuff you, you know, maybe some of you never seen before too. And I you know, just think that'd be kind of cool to be like, oh yeah, I like that card and go pick it up. And I'm not saying for me, I'm just saying in general, like, you know, like, oh man, I want that for my collection and you go pick up a copy. So up oh, back of this one, I mean, these are pretty fried. We got Raichu here, base set. Looks like just one. Yeah, just one copy of Raichu. Man, this one's crazy off center. Yeah. Even top bottom, too. This thing's way off. It is not great condition. It'd be kind of nice if this was in good condition to get it greedy because this, I feel like out of a lot of times they won't give you OC, but I mean, this is definitely OC. I mean, this thing's, it's like a crooked across, it looks like. It's off down. It's off the bottom, off left. Sheesh. Oop. Well, now it's damaged too, right? <laughs> looks like I've got one copy of Jolteon from Jungle. Love this card. Oh, yeah. A lot of, a lot of love on the back of this one. But front doesn't look bad. So again, I mean, binder copy for somebody. All right, we got Zapdos, Space Set. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess I should check for the rarity symbols there just to make sure. Nope. All there. Sometimes you get lucky. You never know. 
Um, but yeah, Zapdos from base. I'm sure back in the day you got lucky a lot more often, but today, you know, most people, oh yeah. This one, uh, this one's been through it. All right, jumping into new back stuff. Maybe we're at 10 minutes. We got two big stacks to go through. Hopefully there's some real big quantity stuff in here that <laughs> speeds this up. Uh, we got a Meiji promo here from PCGP era. We have Flareon. Nice card. What we got in the back? It's going to be weird looking at a new back now. Yeah, we definitely got some lightning on this one. Nothing too crazy it doesn't look like, though. We got Dark Hound Doom from Rocket Gang Returns. Oh, man, why did I mess this? I must have been weird when I was unsleeving these where I didn't do it right because it just seems like they're off by, like, one. So let me just make sure we fix this mini stack I got here. Probably getting a little preview of what we're what we're running into. I'm gonna stick these back with those. But yeah, we had three copies of Flareon. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six copies of your boy Dark Hound Doom from Rocky Gang Returns. Definitely not my favorite Hound Doom. Um, it's a nice arena artwork, but definitely not my favorite. I think there's a I mean it's kind of tough. There's a lot of good Hound Dooms out there. Uh, looks like on the back of this, yeah, we got some wear and tear, looks like maybe something up there, a little crease or something, or maybe just a mark, I don't know. We got Charizard up next from EX Battle Boost. Something you might notice if you've seen me do these, a lot of times you're going to see a lot of the same stuff. Uh, I, there's certain things that I like and I just buy when I see them, um, it just is what it is and, and i should probably modify that because i have so many copies of some stuff it's kind of ridiculous um basically I, built, I need to get i started getting on the singles grind again about a month and a half two months ago and i really need to get on it you guys are going to see a ton of stuff hitting the store over the next i mean it's probably going to take me i'm actually really not buying like a lot of this stuff is stuff that came in i put the orders aside and i don't go through them until i sort them but i don't go through them and process them until I do a video. But uh, I probably have enough of these to do to like the end, the new year. And I PSA slammed me with subs uh, returns the last like month of just pummeling me with like two or three a week. So I want to I want to recoup funds in the uh, business account. So I'm probably just going to wait to submit too. So you're probably not going to see too many submission videos either. But you will see return videos. I have like a thousand cards, I think, in E listed. And then, oh my gosh, I, I, I'd I probably say right now I'm in over my head a little bit for right now until I get caught up. So a little tangent there again, but yeah, that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, we got Charizard here. He has seen better days. And the back of this one was really clean, but then it looks like there's a wave down at the bottom. Yeah, right there. It's unfortunate. Probably a clean card other than that. Are these unlimited? I know the one the other week was. Everybody says the unlimited the EX Battle Boost is super rare, but I don't know if I believe that. I mean, not that it's not rare, because most of the time unlimited is rare from those sets, but I'm, I'm, I don't know if it deserves to draw any significant value from that. Uh, but I don't know. Teach their own. We have Melodic here, Delta Species. What is this? Dragon Frontiers, Japanese, in... In Japanese, it's like offense and defense of something. Like, it's some crazy long title. That's why they just PSA label it as Dragon Frontiers, just because there's no way to fit all that on there. There may be some older ones that actually have the Japanese set title on there, but for the most part, most of them just say Dragon Frontiers. But we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 copies of Melodic. Really like this one, like the fire typing on this, because it just kind of goes with the the color scheme of Melodic to begin with. Nice Serata artwork. Uh, yeah, you can see the top of this one right away. We got that there. Otherwise, pretty clean, but it's always unfortunate when you see a super clean card and then all of a sudden you're like, uh, one little mark. One mark to kill kill the grade. We got one Vulpix here from PT1. I think it's Galactic's Conquest. Love this card. Love the sparkle foiling on this one. I may keep one of these at some point. This one, first glance, at least from, from my end, what I'm seeing doesn't look too bad. And it doesn't honestly look like it has too much of the little bit of chipping here. Yeah, so it probably end up being a nine, but still a nice copy. We have Charmander with the same sparkle foiling from Stormfront. One, two, three, four copies. Yeah. 
think these are kind of underrated a little bit. I mean, they have value, but I, I don't know. It's just kind of weird to me that something... I know it's like a basic re reprint, but for something that's like a, not even a one per box and like you have three three options to get one, Charmander, Charmeleon, or Charizard, and like they're tough to grade because of the chipping and everything, I don't know. It just seems, seems odd to me that they're as cheap as what they are yet. This one doesn't look too bad, though, on the back. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if it's got chipping going on, but it looks like a pretty nice copy. Get this stuff re-sleeved after I'm done here. I was starting to unsleeve stuff permanently, and then it was just kind of like, uh, I don't know. I just felt like some of the stuff I didn't want unsleeved because of the time it's going to take me to, to get to it. Like, if it's stuff I'm going to deal with, like, some of this stuff will stay unsleeved because I'm going to probably get to it next week or the week after. But stuff that's going to be in boxes getting moved around for a while, I kind of like to just re-sleeve it and set it back in and call it a day. It's just much easier to take it out of the sleeve to do these videos and go through everything. But we got one Magmar Level X here from DP2. Magmar's got some wear and tear, or excuse me, not Magmar, Magmortar. We have Arceus here, Arceus, whatever you want to call it, from PT4. This is actually a set version. Some of them come from uh, deck boxes or like half deck kit things. But this is the normal typing. We got one, two, three, four. I think these are pretty cool. I'm not a huge fan, but I think they're definitely... It's a unique thing. You Basically, this is the centerpiece. You have this swirl, and then the rings branch outward, and you have all the other typings that you can put in a binder and see it like come together as one big piece. It's kind of sweet. Look at the back of this one. What is that? Yeah, we got, we got some stuff going on there, unfortunately. But... Again, we're only looking at one cop, back of one copy, and the front of one copy in this. So, you know, this stuff we're 17. We got, we got a bunch of other chances. We got two copies here, some nice L2 reverses. We got the EVs, which they actually don't look too scratched in the front. This one has a little bit of a mark there. Because I probably potentially scratch them, combining them together. Um, yeah, some whitening on this one. But overall, these don't look too bad. Got Eevee and Eevee hanging out. Eh. All right. So you can have Eevee. This is from the Shaman Level X deck, I think it is, or Quarter Deck. I don't know. I can't remember exactly, but I just know it's from that. Um, there's this, like, I think there's, like, two other printings of this. Like, one from something else, and there's one from, um, was it DPP? I think it is, the promo set, where it's, like, from Toys R Us. It's just a non hollow it's like a bingo board something. I guess you had to win bingo at Toys R Us or something. I don't know. Yeah, I know it sounds wild, but that's that's how, how it worked. All right, we just keep dropping this one. This one doesn't want to stay. But we got one, two, three, four. Okay, we're going to try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen copies of ET. Yeah, ET. We got ET here. ET Von Ohm. Uh, I wanted to go back to this one here. Yeah, this one's got a crazy orb on it. This one looks really cool. But 17 copies of this one. But pretty sweet. I really need to get a better phone camera set up. Like, or not a phone, a stand. Um, I guess I think we're at the point now where we should probably invest in that, but I really just don't know what to get. If anyone has any recommendations for that kind of thing where you're, you're, you have a stand that's in front of you, I don't want something that... I really don't, I, I've gotten used to the fact of something being in front of me, and this copy looks pretty nice. I've gotten used to something being in front of me, but I don't like something too bulky where I feel like I'm really, like, working around it. Like, I'd like something, overhead type thing would be kind of cool. I've done, I did that, like, before where I would just sit it above me, but I like to be able to zoom in on some of this stuff, and I like to see what's going on in the camera when I'm doing it, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to go with. We're moving on up. We're getting to that point now where it's time to, time to get some new equipment. We got Garchomp Oval X here from the Garchomp Oval X half deck. We got one, two, three, four copies. Always really like this card. I think it's a little bit undervalued because of, I think the, the 25th anniversary copy kind of undervalued it a little bit. Doesn't really make sense, but I mean, when you have the option to get that one, you know, the other one kind of suffers sometimes. This one is not worth grading, as you can clearly see. 
we got one copy of Arceus Level X. This is from one of the, the decks. This is Psychic and Lightning. You can tell by the P and the T down there, and also the fact that one's uh, one's purple and one's, one's yellow. I mean, that looks like a pretty clean copy to me, unless you're seeing something. Hmm. Nice, nice. We got one Blissey EX here from Golden Sky Silvery Ocean. This also doesn't look terrible. First glance. Ah, I see a dent in the top. Ah, I see that corner dent. you yep. Took one little glance off camera, and that's what I saw. So that's what you get. Uh, we got Talon, Talon Flame? No, this is not Talon Flame. Why am I? Star Raptor. Jeez. Tough times here. Star Raptor Level X from PT3. Uh, yeah, we got some damage on the top. Just some dust. But not too bad looking copy. Uh, we got one copy of the Deoxys from, was this Holland Phantoms? Or Holland Research Tower. Uh, yeah, we got a little damage on the top of this one. And some lightning. Yeah, damage all over, actually. Bottom corner. One copy of Rayquaza from one of the quarter decks. Or this is like the side deck or something. This was like a weird release. Mm, yeah, we got some damage on this one. This is kind of a cool one. Poke Park Rayquaza from the, the Mountain File. You can tell it's from the Mountain File because of the mountain down there. I don't know, I always really like this one. Potential keeper for the collection at some point when I agree to decent copy if I ever do. This one's got some chipping, lightning, etc., etc. Got Slow King here, Dark Slow King from Rocket Gang Returns. Looks like one copy. Doesn't look too bad. Then again, I've been looking on camera now when I look off. So I'm going to zoom in on this right here. So. You're going to see this a lot of times in some of these cards. These like little gold flakes. And at the risk of scratching this, I'm going to just use my fingernail to see if I can get it off. Did not move. Uh, this happens a lot. And what I think it is, is when they cut the border, I think it's like little flakes of like them from the just the trimming process at the factory that rub off onto the card. And for whatever reason, they, they like to stick a lot. But it always, a lot of times it'll look like a scratch or a dent. Um, make sure you look at that. Don't be afraid to like take a Q-tip and just kind of like give it a little rub. And and it's a lot of times, or almost all the time, this will come off. I mean, it's not a scratch. It's not a dent. It just it's something from the the printing the the trimming process or when they cut them. And it just like they're like flakes that seem to stick to the card. I noticed that a lot over the years. And a lot of times you can just remove that off. That looks nice, right? But this is a really nice card. Big fan. All right, next up we got Mess Spirit Level X from DP5. One, two, three, four copies. Zoom out just a little bit again. It's a nice card. Looks like a pretty nice copy, too. Looks like a little speck of dirt there or something. That'll probably come off. I'm not going to worry about it now. Worry about that down the road when I can actually focus on doing it and not damaging the card. We have Espeon here, two copies from L2, Reviving Legends. Really nice card. This is... Pretty clean as well, actually. There we go, we're getting a little lucky here. Getting some nice stuff. We have Azel Level X. Uh, also DP5, one, two, three copies. I don't know, man. This one's not, this one, I don't know if it's 10 worthy, but it might be gradable. Might be like nine worthy. Stuff like that, like stuff like this, where it's like your hits, your one per box. If it's like nine worthy, I usually will typically send that stuff in. Because even at an eight, sometimes that stuff's like profitable. It's a little slower to sell, but it's sometimes worth it. Um, if you watch one of the other videos, we had like 169 or something of these, like something insane. Um, we we have a couple more. <laughs> I think total, I have like 200 and something of them listed on uh, my eBay. I think like two or three of them have sold. So it's not a quick process, but they will sell over time. And, and when those listings start to get more traction, sometimes they just start to fly. But 
This is a really nice full art from XY. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen more copies of the Hoopa. And right there, you're going to see a big old Nike swoosh. <laughs> I don't know what happens to these again they come in like a they came in like a, a packet like with a bunch of other extra stuff it's like a movie giveaway thing apparently there's only three i thought they weren't rare which they aren't technically rare but they are limited to three million uh was the release apparently which three million when you're talking cards isn't really that many um as opposed to a lot of the other releases where you have probably a hundred million for some stuff some of these promos but um, they came in like a packet with like some other stuff in it and then um they proceeded to be mangled around in there get pressed into the items and again i don't know if somebody was just doing the nike swoosh here or what but it's pretty close right it's like it looks pretty good i mean we need a little more detail on it but we could finish that out if we wanted to all right we got mew this is like the mirage forest deck quarter deck or something like that it's kind of cool it has the new stamp on here uh, we got one, two, three copies of that. It's a really pretty card. It's a nice Saito artwork in the stuff we were looking at here. This one's got whitening on the sides, but overall the, the back doesn't look too bad. It looks like a pretty nice copy. Up next, we have a card. I actually really like this card. We have one, two, three copies of this DPTP Alakazam promo. This was like a gym battle winner prize or something along those lines. There's there's a regular version of this, but this has like the gold foil stamp. I'm always a sucker for a gold foil stamp. Um, if one of the, I had a chance to buy one of these back in the day in PSA 10 like years ago. It was like 30 or 40 bucks and I didn't want to pay it. And I was making offers on it and just didn't pay it, which back then that probably seemed expensive. Now, obviously, that seems dirt cheap, but... Um, I just always really like this promo. I don't know what it is about it. So I think if I grade a 10 of this or a 9 or something at some point, I'll probably uh, probably keep it. Just, I don't know, just really like this card for some reason. I don't know what it is about it. These don't look too bad, though. Uh, next up, we have Typhlosion from Dragon Frontiers. It's pretty nice artwork. What? Isao Nakamura. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen copies of Typhlosion from Dragon Frontiers or Offense and Defense of whatever the heck it is. Uh, this is a cool card. I love the Delta Species stuff, and I like that Typhlosion is psychic in this one, which is kind of funny. Didn't the, isn't the newest Typhlosion part psychic? If I remember right, it's kind of funny. I think it is the the Hisuian or Hisuian or whatever you want to call it version. But this is a really cool card. <coughs> Excuse me. I would have to assume at least one of these is grade wool. But the big thing with Dragon Frontiers is always, like, the centering. So this one looks pretty clean. Ooh, well, now it's not. It's damaged now. But, yeah, you look at the front. Super clean card, but look left to right. I mean, it's way off center. And that's, like, the biggest issue with these. Really nice card, though. I'm going to fan these out. This might, be the, this might be the thumbnail. If you're this far and you... You clicked on the video, you might already see how we want to fan these. We want to fan them so that we shuffle them enough and scratch them that they can't be graded and then you get damaged. That's what we want to do. That was a joke, by the way. That was sarcasm. You can't really see. See, type look. Can I, can I fan? Yeah. See, I'm not good at fanning the other way because I'm not that handed, whatever you want to call that for the card people out there, but... Oh, yeah, an hour, an hour working. I know you guys think I'm an idiot right now, and that's fine, because you're probably not wrong, but we're, we're doing this. Gosh, I am so uncoordinated. It's funny how you're uncoordinated you are going in a direction that you're not used to. All right, we're going to put these down just for a second, and we're going to fan these out, and this is going to be a thumbnail because we put so much time and effort into this, and all of you have clicked off the video by now, which is fine. I don't blame you. I would have, too, but... This is going to be the video, or the other video, the thumbnail, and there's my thumbnail. See that? That's my thumbnail, and uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Looks pretty cool, right? Looks pretty sweet, right? You didn't click off the video. You stayed. You're watching. I know you are. All right, moving on. We have Leafeon from, oh man, what is this deck? This is a weird one. I can't remember what it's called, but there's a lot of strange artwork in it. Um, all with this, like, swirly style, but the Leafeon looks really good. 
looks like it looks pretty good condition too. Man, I might have got a good batch of cards here. Hmm. Might be a lucky ducky, huh? Yeah. Alright, we got Cacturn EX from the Grass Quick Construct deck. I uh, always liked all the colors from these, not just the EXs. Like, there's a lot of a lot of good artworks in those. Check them out if you haven't. We got Cacturn EX here, two copies. Cacturn. Cacturn is not in great shape, so we already jinxed it, and uh, yeah, he is he has seen better days. Got one copy of Steelix Non Hollow from Mysterious Mountains. Mm, oh yeah, we got a big old indent on him. We got one Dialga Level X from DP3. I'm pretty sure this is a set one. There's like four or five Dialga Level Xs and Palky Level Xs from this era. The hollow on this one, though. It's really nice. Yeah, it looks pretty clean, too, overall. A little bit of whitening at the top. Nice copy. Doing good today. We're doing good here. This is probably better than the last couple weeks have been. I guess every uh, every blind squirrel finds another once in a while. All right, we got Pikachu. This is the Meiji promo. It's a metal typing, which is pretty sweet. I'm pretty sure there's a glossy version of this, too. It might be a different artwork. I think it's a different artwork, but this is still a pretty cool one. Three copies of Pika. I think Pikachu as a metal type is pretty sweet just because of using, like, like the big, the cool thing in, in the in the show back in the day was when Pikachu learned Iron Tail, like a metal attack. That was, like, the, the big deal. <clears throat> so, kind of cool as a metal type, which I wonder if one of these is Iron Tail. It'd be kind of sweet if it was. If it's not, kind of disappointed in, uh, in Pokemon for not taking advantage of that. I mean, that was probably 20 years ago, but still. We got Tyranitar here. Uh, Dark Tyranitar. This is the fighting type version from the Rocket deck. I don't know if this is the black deck kit or the silver deck kit. I'm not sure which which side this one is but because they're both the same numbering. But yeah, got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 copies of your boy, Tyranitar, typically this is the less desirable version. This has the sparkle foiling that everybody loves on the Dark Dragonite. There might be a few of those in here, actually. Maybe we'll get to see that one, but yeah, this is typically a fan favorite. Man, this, this is a beat-up copy, though. Sheesh. Um, and the back of this one is also pretty whitened up. Got a little mark there. Yeah. So my fingernails are a little dirty. I don't know what it is, man. My fingernails grow so fast. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I would have to assume it's a good thing, like it's something healthy, because you know, hey, like, how do you grow something if you don't have the 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 whatever necessary to do so? But at the same time, who knows? Maybe it's a bad thing. Uh, we got Rayquaza EX here from CP5. Was this Dream Shine Collection or something like that? Uh, we got one, two copies of Ray. Pretty modern card here. Probably more modern than what I typically have in this kind of stuff, but looks like you got a little indent there. But I mean it's it's crazy. It's so funny when you look at like stuff that's I would say probably X, Y, and up. The difference in condition compared to anything past that, just because of the amount of time that's passed. I mean, XY is starting to look a little beat up when you get it, but man, like anything black and white, um, you know, hard gold, silver, silver, all that. I mean, you see it just in what I'm showing you here. Like this, the stuff starts showing up in a, in a lot worse condition than what the modern stuff does for sure. All right, we got energy here. I can't remember. I think this is like the Holland Phantom set. These are pretty popular. I think they're pretty sweet myself. And this copy has a little bit of whitening, but I think these are a big fan favorite for people to get signed and like get sketches on, but I don't know. I don't know how popular a fighting energy is going to be, but same deal with these too. I remember, remember a couple of signings, I sold a couple of raw copies of these just because people were planning on getting them signed. I think these too, we're, we're, we're just energy efficient right now, I guess we'll say. We've got two lightning energies here. Again, I can't remember what set these are from. For whatever reason, they don't have the, the set symbol on the energies, even though they are part of the set. They are beautiful, though. Yeah, and this one's seen better days. And then it looks like we got one copy of the lightning energy, which actually doesn't look too bad. Any scratches on the front? Mm -hmm. All right, we can't get too involved in that. If I start getting involved with that, then the videos, videos are going to be, like, two hours long and... 
Nobody wants to watch a two-hour-long video of me rambling. I know that. I don't even want to watch that, to be honest with you. I don't think anybody does. And this one's got a little bit. This one is not as nice, the water energy. Cool one here, too. We got the reverse foil uh, double colorless energy from L1. I would have to assume, yeah, this thing has some play on it just because I'm sure this was in somebody's deck at some point. Yeah, nice little dent there. That was a stressed nail print when they were in a, a heated battle. Had a couple of these, the, uh, one of the other videos. I think these, I think they were, they might have been XY. This one's XY, but the rest of them are from the, there's, there's, for whatever reason, region, yeah, region, reason, they printed like two versions of this. Um, and the same, it's the same thing, just two versions, which I think is kind of odd for, for this time, time period. They didn't do that too often. But we have a full art. Uh, we have four Xerneas CX here, one from the actual set, XY. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six from the XYC um, deck. I can't remember exactly what that release was, but it's kind of odd that they did a full art like that. My only, my only thought is that maybe this was super playable and they did that to make it more accessible for players. I have no idea, but that, that's the only thing I could potentially think of. I mean, you're going to see right off the bat here. A lot better looking condition than uh, than the rest of the stuff we've been looking at. But it's a really nice card. Probably like 50 of those at this point. No joke. But because uh, I just, for whatever reason, I hoard stuff and don't list and send it in for grading. It's been my biggest issue over the years. But um, so I guess, guess it's not a bad thing. Stuff goes up in value. I have plenty of inventory. But we need uh, we need to start, start getting in a better process for sure here. We got Houndoom from Mysterious Mountains. non hollow version, obviously. Three copies. Yeah. Looks like a nice copy and until you get down to the bottom. I mean, I'm sure you can see what's going on there. I don't know what that is. I don't think that's just going to wipe off and go away. All right. We got one, two, oh, yep, there's a the dragon I was talking about earlier. We got two copies of the Deoxys from Holland Phantoms here. Yeah, this is Phantoms. The, like, hourglass looking thing is Research Tower, which, now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably not an hourglass. That's probably actually the tower. <laughs> it's amazing the things you, you realize when you're just, like, thinking out loud like this. Yeah, not too great on this one. I do like that this is a dark type Deoxys, though. We got a last little stack here. If you guys are still here, hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're enjoying going through this stuff and been the last couple weeks. So I'm definitely going to get a little more consistent. I mean, not that I'm not consistent with videos already. I, I feel like I'm pretty decent with that. But every once in a while, I just kind of need a week off like this. And I'm sure I'll do it again here, you know, come the holidays. Um, probably not during Thanksgiving, but I would say Christmas to like New Year's. It's probably a good chance I don't do any videos that week other than a sales recap. But anyway... Got Dark Dragonite here, also from the deck kit. I think this one is from the Silver deck kit, but I could be wrong again. This one has the crazy foiling, beautiful artwork. This is just an absolutely amazing card. These were selling for, like, I think I sold two two or three of these in PSA 10, and they were all selling for around 800 to 1,000, maybe even more at one point. Uh, I might have caught them in the downtrend, to be honest with you, um, during, uh, during the peak of things at, like, 2020, 21, 22. But, I mean, you can see, I mean, it's not, a, it is a deck card, but, I mean, to buy one of these decks anymore, I, I would have to assume it's probably like six, $700. And you never know what you're going to get out of that. So, does the price make sense eh, for 10 I mean, it depends. Depends what's on the market. But at the same time, I mean, it's not like you just go buy one of these decks, grade one, and, and put it in your collection. And this one certainly isn't getting graded, so. It's a really nice card, though. Next up, we have Absol from Rulers of the Heavens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's what we like to see to get through this quicker. We got 20 copies of Absol from Rulers of the, yeah, Rulers of the Heavens. I'm having a tough time with my R's tonight. Uh, this is a beautiful card by Kimura. Look at this thing. Oh, my gosh. I love this card. I like all this stuff from I like a lot of this stuff from Lords of the Heavens. I think I said before one of my favorite EX Man, I can't talk to them. My favorite EX era sets is Miracle of the Desert. Um the Sandstorm is the English equivalent, but uh, you would you would think there has to be one in here that's gradable. I don't know about this back one, but I mean with twenty copies, you know, we gotta get at least one hit, right? But man, it's such a good card. Love it. 
uh, in a perfect world in the future, when you guys are seeing these videos, when we're at number like 40 of this, this series, I will hopefully be caught up with this just absolute insane amount of inventory that I have to the point where when you see this, if you're interested in some of this stuff, I should just be like getting this, doing the video, processing it, uh, whatever goes for grading gets put away, obviously, and then whatever's left over gets listed, conditions described, et cetera, et cetera, gets a scan and should be up for sale. But we're uh, we're a ways out from that. We'll say that might be some end of 2024 stuff because of how much catching up I have to do, but we'll see. We got Pikachu here. This is from some uh, deck thing from uh, like Heart Gold, Soul Silver era. I can't remember what it is, but it's kind of a cool Pika. I mean, he's just throwing down. Be kind of cool if this was hollow, wouldn't it? I guess we'll take a look at the back of this one. He's got a nice little indent right, right up here where my finger is. You can kind of see it. We got Plusle, one, two copies from the play promo set. You had to earn these. I think this one of them's one of the Plusle or the Minin, whichever one. Plusle's like 2,000 experience points. Minin's 3,000 or vice versa, but I think that's the way it goes. Yeah, this is four, this is five, so this would be 3,000. I don't know how tough that was to get back then, but um, it's not like these are super rare, but they are, uh, they are like a... I wouldn't say a prize promo, but I mean, you had to actually like complete things in the series to uh, actually get awarded these or get, I think they were delivered to you. Don't look too bad on this one. These are really pretty cards and they, they go together if you if you didn't notice that. It's like an everlasting chain, see? The the, the plus is grabbing the mining ear, the mine is grabbing the plus ear, and it just goes for infinity and beyond. I guess we'll take a look at the mine in here in the back too. That's not bad. All right, next up we got Dark Ampharos from Rocket Gang Returns. One, two copies. Pretty cool card. A lot of electricity going on this one. Who is this? Emmy Miwa. That's a name I haven't heard very often. It, it kind of sucks when you see some of these artist names and you, you don't recognize them and you like the artwork because it means they probably didn't do a lot of work for Pokemon and you see them a lot of times you're like, I kind of wish they would have done a lot of work for Pokemon. But it is what it is. This one's seen some wear and tear. Uh, we got one, two copies of the Raikou Suicune Legend. This is just the bottom half. We got a big, big old view of Suicune. And now that I'm looking at it, man, they did, uh, did Suicune kind of dirty on this one, huh? Got some, got some weird old legs. What, what's going on here? Like, one leg's coming across, one leg's coming down all contorted. The front legs are here. He kind of looks like he's standing on his hind legs like a T-Rex. That's, uh, that's interesting. Who did this? Who did this monstrosity? Where are you, artist name? Or is there none? Huh. That's interesting. That is, uh, I, I never really looked at this half this close up. If this line work, it almost looks like Kasube, but I don't think Kasube would do that to uh to sweet him but then again i mean it's not like it's bad it doesn't look horrible it's just when you look at it close like this it just kind of looks a little strange you know what now i'm thinking about didn't they do a sweet coon recently that's like in like a dinosaur form like it's on up it's standing on like uprights am i right on that because if i am that'd be kind of hilarious like this is this was the precursor to that that paradox form <laughs> be kind of wild i guess we'll look at the back of this one. Oh my god well that would be uh that'd be a nice size dent right there. All right. We got Bullpix here, the Alolan Bullpix. We've got one, two, three of these promos from Sun and Moon. Definitely a little more modern here. And got a little scratch there, yeah. These are probably listed at like excellent to near mint. Just depends on what the rest of it looks like. But I, I don't know, like Especially when you start getting into modern like this, it's more it's more efficient just to sell it raw, make a couple bucks, and and try again than it is to uh, to grade some stuff. Like I'm starting to get, I I was super picky before. I wanted inventory, so I sent in about two thousand cards. Um, I'm getting all that back now. I am not that I'm not selling lower grade stuff. But I'm realizing that a lot of this stuff, lower grade, it, it you potentially could be more profitable just selling it raw, you know, as as near mint, 
especially when you get like an eight, a nine, where, you know, it is near mint or even a seven is near mint, um, rather than selling it graded and spending the $15 to grade it. So I'm happy that I did that because I'm like super souped up on inventory going into the holidays, but I'm going to be a little more choosy going forward here with stuff again, which is fine. I mean, you got to adapt and, and, um, change based on how you feel like you're doing, how the market's doing and, and just kind of go from there. And another thing too, when you buy stuff like this, you can't get upset. If you, the biggest thing is, you can't be like, "Oh, I'm gonna buy this. I'm gonna pay max price for a near mint copy, and and it's gonna come mint condition, and just like that, mint condition, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sell it as a ten, and I'm gonna make a hundred dollars profit after I grade it at fifteen dollars bulk, and you know I'm gonna be a big baller, you know, on every card that I get. This is just not how it works. That's why when I buy this stuff, I am comfortable with what I'm paying so that when I get something like this, I'm like, hey, it is what it is. It's going to go up for sale as damaged and uh, someone's going to get a deal because realistically in a binder, you're going to see a little of that, but someone's going to get this for a binder because it's going to be way cheaper than what a, what a normal raw copy would be. And uh, you got to be thankful. You're still going to be able to sell it. It's going to go to a good home. And um, you get to try again. That's why you don't go out spending money on, on this stuff. You, you've got to feel comfortable with what you're paying for stuff the higher you take risk you take the bigger chance you have a big loss and that's just kind of how it is i mean that's common sense realistically but yeah you can't get mad that's basically what i'm telling you don't get mad don't be mad if you're mad right now don't be mad if you're still mad don't be mad and if you're mad don't be mad if you're mad don't be mad okay now we got that out of the way we have kyogre here xyp promo uh, this is like a lottery thing. I can't remember anymore. It's been a while since uh, since I graded one of these and saw like what the actual title is or listed one. It's a cool card. There's a Groudon equivalent as well. But I, I again, I can't remember what the release was. Who did this art? Oh, it's just Narita. All right. All right, next up we got Totodile. One, two, three, four copies. This is the Hard Cold Soul Silver release campaign. Clearest way to tell when stuff's a release campaign promo usually is, well, you can't read that, but, I mean, what does that look like? Gold, silver, it's a promo. I mean, what was the sell rate, you know? It's uh, pretty obvious. But this this was the start of, you know, this era. So these are a little different. These are a little better than normal. Got the nice foil stamp down here, but... Totodile is the happiest of boys. He is doing big things. He is ready to take over uh, Heart Gold Soul Silver era. But there's like six of these. It's like Totodile, Cinequil, Chikorita, Mary, Teddy Ursa, and Fampy, I want to say, is the last one, I believe. But nice little set to collect for sure. Nice cards. Got Politoed here from Split Earth. I don't know if I've ever really looked at this non-hollow up close. This is a really good artwork by Nishida. Doesn't feel as soft as what a Nishida artwork usually does, but ooh, might be a nice condition card. I could be complete. No, we got scratches in the front. False alarm, false alarm, not a 10. We got Palkia Level X here, Palkia G from Galactus Conquest, PT1. Crazy sparkle foiling. You can already tell with this one. She She's got some bow to her. Yeah, this is this one's not too bad a little mark down here i don't know what that is we'll figure that out later but not too bad and lastly for this video it's been 48 minutes if you're still here hi i'm still here too we have mudkip and this is kind of cool nice way to finish this these are 7-eleven promos uh for whatever reason, there was a hollow and a non-hollow version and there were about what like probably six six of these it's Mudkip, Torchic, Trico, and then we had Ludicolo, Absol, and Flygon, I want to say. Maybe a Salamence. No, Salamence wasn't 7-Eleven. I think there might have been only been six, but I could be wrong. Just off the top of my head, I think that's what we got going on there. But there's a non-hollow and a hollow version. I think they were, they were given out in packs. Like, it was just like a little mini pack. I, I don't know. I could be wrong there, but... Uh, I don't know if you just got lucky and said, hey, I got this, or if you got like one non-hollow, one hollow in a pack, or, or what exactly was, was going on there. But either way, there is a non-hollow and a hollow version, and they actually have different numbering, which this is kind of weird. They don't usually do that kind of release like that, where you have a side-by-side -side card like this with two different numbers, especially when ADVP was kind of a short number promo set. 
but yeah, uh, we got the hollow version here. It's a really pretty card. I actually just sold a Torchic 10 the other week. I think it was like a hundred. I think that might have been on, was that last week's? It might have been last week's uh, Monday sales recap. The Torchic was on there, the PSA 10. I think it sold for like 170 or something. But oh yeah, we got a nice little whatever that is up there. And then the non hollow version, always nice to see an artwork in its true beauty without the hollow pattern. Although the hot, not to say the hollow is not beautiful, it absolutely is. But you know, this is what technically the artist was intending you to see. And it is a, it's a beauty. It's a beauty, mate. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I haven't talked to Steve for a while. I guess that's my sign that I miss him. Um. Yeah, that's a nice card, but we'll check the back of this one, and I guess we'll be on our way. We've been hanging out for, for 50 minutes, if you're still here. Not too great on that one, but yeah. Like I said in the beginning, $1,400 what we paid for all this all this jazz. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it, the way it looks. I mean, again, I, I'm on my singles arc right now, although I have like a thousand graded cards to list. We'll, we'll do a little side preview here. We have some sorting going on, but... We we have these that I think some of these are in a video. Maybe one, actually no, I think only one of these is in a video. And then we'll pan you. We'll just do a quick pan. We have three subs. Oh man, I probably doxed myself. I do oh, you can see my dress anyway when I ship stuff, so it doesn't matter. But we got three <laughs> three PSA returns right there that aren't even out of the box yet. It's it's I got work to do. We'll just say that we got stuff to do. Uh, we gotta we gotta get on our grind um, but yeah oh here we'll do something a little extra quick too uh no actually we won't i'm saving this for video sorry false alarm false alarm false alarm we're saving it we're saving it for another video i just i just had an idea we we will not we've been hanging out for 52 minutes i i mean i doxed myself um again not that it matters because literally you know, when I ship something, you can see where I'm at. And probably you could look me up and find my address. I think most people don't understand that. If you type in somebody's name in Google, typically you can figure out where uh, where they live. Um, it's it's really not that hard to do that kind of investigation. I guess it's maybe creeping, but realistically, it's if you, if you had to find somebody, you could most likely find them. But anyway, we're getting off topic. $1,400 is what we paid for this. You tell me if you think I want or lose. Nobody seems to want to tell me. I guess that means I'm a loser. That's fine. I'm good with that. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with what we got here. Um, some of this is going to go right into like the go through and list pile just because of what I'm working on at the moment. While some of this stuff will probably get tucked away for who knows how long. It's just all going to depend. Um, we're, we're going to get caught up. 2024 is going to be the year of the catch up. We're going to get caught up on all the inventory. Everything's going to be good to go. And next year at this time, I won't be telling you how I failed you and that I didn't get all that done, right? You're right. That's how it's going to be. All right, guys. As always, like, subscribe, comment down below, or don't. But either way, I'll catch you next one. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you.